Hello there, and welcome back to another edition of Silly Car Showdown. Today, no, we are taking a look at, well, it's not a car. This is the Mercedes-Benz Unimog requested by CR27, because someone was going to recommend one of these silly trucks, and in fact, he recommended two of them. But for now, today, we have the Unimog. It's big, it's boxy, it's probably going to be very slow. It's also, I believe, although I do want to double check this because I know some of these vehicles can be weird. Uh, let's just quickly... Yep, it's the first all-wheel drive car we've ever had. Excellent. Anyways, as always, we're going to start by taking a look at the engine swaps. And, well, you basically have a choice of which racing truck engine do you want to stick in it. You have the choice of the 12.8 litre inline 6 turbo diesel or the 2400 horsepower 12.8 litre inline 6 turbo diesel. Uh, the stock engine can get not particularly much power so we are going to put one of these in it and I'm actually going to opt for the Mercedes-Benz uh, diesel because it is a little bit more interesting than the Volvo Iron Knight diesel. I'm not saying the Iron Knight diesel is not interesting uh, but quite a lot of people would go for that. Of course uh, no Forza Aero is allowed but this car does not have Forza Aero so sod it we're going to have that. Uh, that will probably save us a lot of weight. Indeed it does. Uh, or we could have the wheel in the back. We'll just have it as a bone bear truck. Does look a little bit weird, but that's the way it goes. Unfortunately, no customizable tires for this. But you can customize the widths, and you get 425s on the front and 425s on the rear. So, not exactly small tires, but uh, no option for race tires there. Which will indeed... Uh, affect the car quite a bit. Again, I'm not expecting this to be quick in the slightest, but it was recommended to me and I knew a, quite a few people would probably be very curious as to what the Unimog will end up doing. So there we go. We're going to stick a roll cage in there uh, and we're going to stick in some weight reduction, which, Jesus Christ, that does definitely drop some weight out of this. And finally, onto the racing truck engine itself. Uh, well, we're going to get on to A796PI. So we end up with 1,609 horsepower, 5,489 foot-pound of torque. That's a lot. 12,763 pounds of weight. Yeah, it's probably going to be relatively good accelerating. It's probably going to be relatively good in the corners. However, straight line speed, I really am not expecting anything at all out of the Unimog, got to be honest. But hey, uh, the GC40 surprised me last time. Who knows? Maybe the Unimog will be a speed demon. I doubt it, but let's go ahead to the track and see what happens. Anyways, welcome back once again to the SCS track where we're going to be putting the big old Unimog through its paces. It is going to get five laps to set the best time it possibly can. Our current leader is a Ford a GT40 equipped with the EcoBoost engine that set a 146.039 the Unimog unlikely to go ahead and Jesus Christ what are these gear ratios um, the Unimog unlikely to go ahead and beat that this car's closest rival is probably gonna be the Hillman Imp which set a time of a 153.350 uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Unimog gets on. I'm not expecting particularly amazing things from the Unimog. It is our first all-wheel drive vehicle, uh, which will definitely give it an advantage in the fact that I can actually get on the throttle and all the rest of it. The problem is it weighs, well, six tons, even with all the weight reduction and everything, so it's still gonna be big. It's still gonna be cumbersome. It's still probably not gonna be massively quick. Uh, the top speed, the game reckons it is 160. I did actually quickly thrash this car around in free roam, or truck I should say. I did actually quickly thrash the Unimog around, and uh, I can definitely confirm it will actually get to that speed roughly, given a long enough straight, but uh, around here, uh, probably not. Yeah, it, it's not quick. It's really not quick. Again, was not expecting the Unimog to be a particularly quick car. It's going to be nice to drive. Curious how much boost it makes, though. Uh, 73.5 pounds again. 
So the same as the Boost Minimp did. So not too bad. Oh god, the Switchblade in this thing is going to be interesting. It's weird, it actually sort of wheel spins quite a lot through the gears. Like the first six gears you have to be so on your toes and constantly changing. It's uh, pretty bad. Yeah, it's, it's just a terrible vehicle to drive. Also, there's the one slight issue of you can't really see what's going on with the front end, which is not useful in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Anyway, it's a 217.646 on our first flying lap with the Unimog. Yeah, this is probably going to go uh, about as expected, to be honest with you. I was going to say worse than expected, but then I remembered it's a Unimog and it's requested by CR27, who basically dedicates his life to making my life hell. So, Also, I forgot to mention in the last episode, um, even though I said I'd mention it, but in typical usual me fashion, uh, I forgot about it. Uh, shout out to Azza for starting uh, the PvP events once again. Uh, we have been recording all five of these in a row. It's probably going to be the last one uh, that gets recorded tonight. Either this one or like, one after this. It'll be the last one. I'm probably going to bulk record these a little bit. So, uh, if... Uh, just apparently Giant Shrock is stopped by puny fence. Story of my life. Anyways, um, one quick thing that is worth pointing out is this is probably going to be bulk recorded so if you comment something if in particular you want something changing or something like that I do apologize I might not mention it for a little while uh, one thing I do know is I definitely need to turn down the music volume because I'm sick of hearing that fucking music as soon as you load in I hate the music in this game anyway so uh, that's not gonna be much of an issue to go ahead and do that. Then we approach the switchblade once again. There we go. That's a little bit better, but again, just the acceleration in this thing is stupid. It feels a lot quicker than it is, just because you have to change, 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 change. change. Just gear up, gear up, gear up, gear up, gear up. It's uh, pretty darn irritating, shall we say. It also doesn't turn in particularly well, although, are you surprised, it's the fucking Unimog. To be fair, if YouTube didn't have a weird thing against swearing, I'd probably call this episode the fucking Unimog. Anyways, 216.035. It's improvement, I guess. Um, yeah, it's not quick. It, it's not quick. Also, it has... Again, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what the hell is the issue with these roads here in the sort of first half. They have those weird sort of jump kinks in them. Again, I don't know if it's potholes or something, because I know this game does have a few of those littered about in places. But even if it is a pothole, it's sort of a weird way for a car to react. To sort of just immediately try and fly itself into the air, but uh, I guess stranger things have occurred. If we slow down once again, going into the Glasgow Smile. Uh, yeah, speed up to it is uh, pitiful, should we say. The slowest car we've had, I think, was doing 146, and that was the Cayman. Was it the Cayman or was it the Imp? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, the Unimog is definitely stealing all of the slowest accolades, but again, can't say it's hardly surprising was not expecting a lot out of this. In case you're wondering uh, about sort of the stock engine stuff, you might be saying, oh, why, why did you put the Mercedes-Benz racing truck engine in it? Why if someone recommends the racing truck? That's fine. Um, the reason I have done that is because the stock engine in this, it will only get to, I think, mid C-class. And at that point, it's just not even worth running because it will just be awful quite frankly, so decided to do my best to avoid a light one. Anyways, as we go up the hilly bits here, 
Yeah, it's not. Actually, this lap's a lot quicker than the last lap. I'll give it that. We get a 207.835 in the Union Mog. Okay, we're starting to make some progress. Slowly but surely. Again, it might be better to just sort of smash into many things in the Union Mog because the Union Mog does not give fuck. The Union Mog. One advantage is the Unimog is basically the honey badger here in Horizon 4. Yeah, I think there might be some like drain covers or something. I'm seeing like little indents in the road on like the sides. So yeah, wouldn't surprise me if there's like some weird sort of drains or something going on there. Break a bunch of shit going into there. Slow on the brakes once again, try and run the steer into there. So we come once again up to the Glasgow Smile. Yeah, the truck. Truck is not quick. Truck is not qu I think that's quicker than it's gone previously, 110. But, it's not bad. There we go, perfect. Go on. Where's the window wipers? Oh, the window wipers are actually conventional window wipers. I've got to be honest, I can't say I was expecting the Unimog to have conventional wipers. I was expecting it to like some weird roof mounted thing system going on, but uh, no, apparently not. It is reasonably well set up, which is good to see. There's a very loud, I'm assuming the motorbike goes back. Oh! I wonder if the Unimog can probably just drive up there. I might try that. <laughs> if the Uni. The Unimog might be able to just completely destroy the fucking switchblade. Which, if that's the case, I mean, you know. I don't condone cheating, but. I if it's a case where a vehicle needs to do it, it might be worth looking into. Uh, certainly. Yeah, the Unimog, you're not really going to get that much more advantageous out of it. Uh, 207835 is still the time to beat with our little uni but I don't particularly expect it to uh, it might go quicker on this lap but it, I can't imagine it's going to be by much particularly again it's 13 seconds down or it's 14 seconds currently down on the imp I mean it's not going to happen as much as some people probably do want the uni mog to loud bike again piss off wanker um, yeah, as much as people probably want the Unimog to shatter all the records, it, I mean, it will do that, just in a bad way, for now. Again, I'm sure there's, some of you have got some truly horrific cars lined up for me. And also, some probably very good cars lined up, so maybe I shouldn't be so judgmental. I think this lap is quicker, though. Certainly. Ooh, we got 114 down towards the Glasgow Smile that time, so that's good. Smash a couple of old style lampposts out of the way. And on the power once again. Mighty Unimog charging like a stallion. Or a hippo. Or a rhino. It's more rhino, to be fair. At least rhinos are kind of dangerous. Right. Go up to here, go up to here. No. <laughs> the answer is no. You can't quite drive over the switchblade, which is just saying. Might have killed that time slightly, but it was worth a look. Whether it was possible to do or not. Some people could have probably told me that before even watching that happen, but. There's always fun in experimentation, remember that, folks. Unless it's like experimenting with drugs. Don't do that. Don't take drugs. Anyways, yeah, that would have been a quicker lap if I didn't decide to try and see if I could smack into the wall or not, but... Honestly, probably not that much of a quicker lap. The Unimog is finally over and done with. It sets a 207.835. Which will put it, well... Fifth place. It last. It's, it's, it's done for. It's no more. Yeah. It is 14 seconds, 14 and a half seconds off of the time of the Hillman Imp. And it is a full 21 seconds 
off of the time of our current leader, the GT40 with the EcoBoost engine. That being said, uh, the Unimog, not quite as bad as I was expecting, to be honest with you. It's actually not that terrible a vehicle to drive. It's actually reasonably quick. Uh, I don't know how quick it would be compared to, you know, the cars in its classification, namely the top of A-Class, but, you know, with cars like the Unimog and the Iron Knight, they're only really meant for one purpose anyway, and serious racing isn't particularly one of them. Uh, but anyways, thank you all very much for watching another version of the Silly Car Showdown. Do hope you've enjoyed. As always, if you'd like to request cars for the series, you can do so in the comment section both on my channel and on HG Central. Do bear in mind there is a limit of two car requests per person. And also, the only modification that you can request I do specifically, if you want to see an engine swap, you can request that. I'll leave it blank if you just want me to use my own discretion. But uh, yeah, no saying, oh, I want this run on stock tyres or whatever, whatever, because I want to make this as fair as possible. Also, uh, if you'd like to go ahead, if you're watching this on HG Central, there is a link down below to my channel. If you want to come and check me out, you can do that. And you will also see uh, the Silly Car Showdown videos earlier than you will on HG Central, as well as the rest of my slightly subpar content. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching, and until next time... Farewell.